So when did you know that this thing had a great chance of happening? Uh, the day we announced it. Um, you know, there was, there was a lot of iterations that were going back and forth. And as I stated earlier, we started this discussion back in early November. And, you know, you know part of it is, is you got to realize he's the face of their franchise. And, and so I think for them, there was not a guarantee that they were going to move him, but they wanted to explore what it might look like. And so as we were going back and forth on players or what, it, you know, what we could possibly put in to make this happen, the closer we got to winter meetings was when I started to worry that it might not happen. And so to finally get us over the hump this week, it was very exciting. And, uh, you know, we just think we needed to do something different. And, and what I said at the end of uh, the season in that, that end of the year conference press conference was sometimes you have to do things that you're not comfortable with. And, you know, I've always worn that long view hat where you're, you're trying to think about what the organization is going to look like in, in 2022 or 2025. But this is different. We, we made this deal because we want to focus on 2019 and we think he makes a difference for us. It's not all often that you match up as perfectly with uh, another team, especially a team that has players like Arizona. It seems like what you had a lot of is what they needed. It seemed like a natural match. Well, I definitely think like like Carson Kelly had value to a lot of teams. Um, I think in this industry, you always hear pitching has value. So, you know, when you think about the fit for them, sure, it made natural sense. But as we were looking at, at all the different things we could possibly do too, those were names that were coming up often. Well, you have some untouchables. Are there some guys that they're going to ask for the moon? Every team starts here probably and you end up here. Do you go through that process now? You have a lot of names people are interested in. Did, are you experiencing that right now? I always feel like the, the strategy of, of talking about untouchables is, is dangerous because what if someone would give you something that's so good he becomes touchable. So it's always sort of a bad strategy. Uh, there's certainly players that are on our roster that you are probably highly unlikely we would move, but the, the idea of, of putting the best type of team together is, is understanding what those arbitrages look like. So we never approach it with, we just won't do it. Was his value, was it tricky though to determine because of the one year left on the contract, did that kind of change the dynamic here a little bit in terms of uh, the back and forth? Because it is a one year, not rental, but it could be. We understand the math and you know, does it pencil out perfectly? Probably not, but what what we still were thinking about was more 2019 and not worrying about 2020 or 2021. With that said, and, and he was pretty content, hey, I just want to concentrate on this season. Um, you have, you're like on the clock now to keep him as a Cardinal long term. Will that be something you would approach the, the agent or make a phone call with? after the two sides have kind of fallen in love with each other? Well, I hope the two sides fall in love with each other. But in terms of, of, of how we'll approach that, as you know, my answer is going to be that's going to be kept confidential. And, and it will be a discussion that's between his agent and myself at some point. But the reality is, is, is this just happened. And let him have time to breathe. Let him get time to meet his teammates. And you know, you hope it becomes a scenario like we've done in the past, where players come here and they truly want to stay here. And time will tell on that. But you know, right now, to, to what Paul was saying, and I will echo it, is this is about 2019, and uh, we certainly feel like when we made this move, we changed the, what our club looks like and what it will look like in our division and in our league. And so we think he has that type of impact. Seems that like you talk about impact with. With all the numbers and all of the metrics, if you look at him over the last three or four years, it seems like he's right there among the best players in the National League. As you evaluated him as, as an opponent, how did you look at him? Well, obviously, we, we, we thought a lot of him because we, we traded a lot of players for him. Um, but more importantly, like when you start to, to drill down a little bit of, of the type of person he was, you know, performance is easily measured, but when you start to talk about more of the subjective and the character side of something, he was just checking all those boxes, and it, it really became something that, that the more we heard, the more we wanted to see this deal happen. Mo, well, there's a lot of big names out there, big money players. Was your comfort level always, though, to find a trade partner and use the currency of talent that you guys have, as opposed to getting in some huge bidding war? Was that sort of the offseason hope? It really wasn't hope. I think when you think about our strategy, we want to understand both. Um, so to say there was no dialogue with free agents or understanding of that, that wouldn't be fair. But, you know, ultimately the one place we had strength was we had depth on our roster where we felt we could arbitrage that 
in a trade better than maybe trying to get into a bidding war in the free agent market. It's fair to say this is your big bat. There isn't another big bat yeah. coming, right? I, I would imagine this is our big bat, yes. And as far as uh, Dexter's role here, a lot of projected lineups, sometimes they leave him out. You see him having a bounce back. Is he kind of the reset button? Would that be fair? Absolutely. Um, you know, Mike Schilt and I met with him about uh, six weeks ago. Tried to lay it out for him on expectations. Uh, I'll see him again next week when I'm out in Vegas. And, and certainly, uh, you know, when, when he heard about this deal, he gave me a couple thumbs up. I mean, he's, he's thrilled about it. But yes, he absolutely wants to be a part of this club and have an impact on this club. And uh, he's going to get that opportunity. So your everyday lineup, as you mentioned, do you think is set? And the number one priority is the left side of the bullpen? Not I would say that's something that we're going to, you know, explore. There, there's a lot of different ways to do this too. So we, it's there's no like simple answer, but some of this may take some time. So just be patient. You know, we, we are going to be trying to be active next week and see what we can do. But, you know, we don't look at the the, the off season ending on a week from Friday. So um, there's lots of times to still add players. Well, when you said something we had to do is, I know your fan base is over here and you guys are over here, but is some of the two a reaction? The fans are a little restless, like, hey. We want to get back to the postseason. When you talk about that urgency, how much of it is? Look, I'm not naive. I, I speak in public quite a bit, and I, I, I think I have a pretty good pulse of what the fans want to see, and I think the fans did want something done. And, you know, we are blessed with having three million fans come through the gates, but we have to be smart enough to realize, well, that may not last forever. And so doing something to, to keep that engagement and, and have them have faith and trust in this ownership and management is certainly one of the things that we do think about. And uh, hopefully this type of deal shows that we're serious. Is there relief when it's done? What's the word? When it's done, that's a big move. Are you guys high-fiving? What's the reaction? <laughs> you know, I think I've been doing this so long, the, the reaction is, is more of this, like that deep breath. But, you know, reality is we did this two days ago. Yesterday morning, had a meeting with my staff and said, like, what's next? You know, like, so, you know, it's never one that you can really just sort of enjoy the moment. It's, we still have time and we still realize that there's work to be done. And, and so we're going to continue to do that. Frank asked about lefty relief. How high on, a, on your checklist is a closer? You know, I, th I think when I, we, I think we have some internal options there. I think there is some things we may explore outside still, but, um, you know, we have a lot of arms. I think the key for us is how do we use them and 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 is there a internal solution with that? But, you know, clearly between now and, and spring training, I imagine we're going to add a few more. So it's just sort of the natural uh, uh, sort of attraction to try to always have more arms. Good stuff. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Sir.